I love the NES. You guys know I do. I always talk about how great it is, all the phenomenal games. And you know what? There are a lot of really great games, but some games over time have been kind of overrated. And that's what we're going to look at today, some of the most overrated NES games, according to me. Now look, my list is going to be a lot different than yours, so let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments right now, what your most overrated NES games are, maybe we can have a conversation about them down there. Now my channel is all about nostalgia, the warm fuzzies, and looking back and having a great time. But if you want to stay up to date with me talking about what's going on today with gaming and entertainment news, you can follow me on my brand new Craig Talks News channel. There's a link down in the description as well as in the pinned comment. So with that said, let's check this out. Hey, I'm Stuttering Craig, and this is my top 10 overrated NES games. Number 10. All right, number 10 on my list. I don't understand this. I don't understand this game at all. I don't, well, I, I very much understand this game. What I don't understand is the obsession with this game. I don't understand why people love this game. I don't understand why people need to have this game. And I'm talking about Tetris. But not the Tetris you're thinking of. The Tengen Tetris. The Tengen Tetris. This is the game that are Tengen. I'm not quite sure how to say it, but uh, it's. I think that the NES version of Tetris is the Nintendo version is vastly, vastly superior from the music, uh, from the gameplay. I think it's so much unbelievably better. I don't understand why people have such a hard on for this thing. Even just looking at this game side by side, I don't understand it. It has the it has like a a less good version of music on it. Still has the Russian feel to it and everything. But when you compare it side by side with NES Tetris, I simply don't understand or Nintendo Tetris. I don't understand how anybody could potentially take this over the other one. Now I understand this has two players on it. I get it. I understand that. But I'm not, I'm not sure that I'll play a superior version of Tetris than two-player Tetris. I mean, I totally get it. The Game Boy version of this is superior. The NES version of Tetris is superior. Especially when you have both these. And this is, I, I, if I recall correctly, this is a non, this is, or this is a copyright infringing or a non-official NES game. When you looked at the, with the, when you looked at the cartridge itself, it didn't look like a traditional NES game. It was kind of weird to have that Tengen, Tengen feel to it. I don't know. I never understood it. Don't get it. I don't understand the obsession with this game. And I'll just leave it at that. Number nine. I get this game. I get the lore behind this game. I don't understand how this game ever got to the point to where it had lore in this game. When I played this game growing up, I just didn't understand it. Even playing this game now, I still don't quite understand the appeal of it. The fact that it got a sequel was amazing to me. The fact that it spawned one of the greatest franchises in video game history is appealing to me, or is, is interesting to me. Metal Gear for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The idea of running around, I, I don't know, for me, the whole premise of this game was so foreign to me because video games at the time were just run, jump, kill. And the idea of having a stealth aspect of this, I, I don't understand. I didn't understand. And I think that's why people appreciated the game or hyped the game way more than it should have been. It's different, so it's got to be good. And yeah, you can smoke cigarettes and stuff, and you run around, and you're snake, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently there's considerably superior versions of this game, like on the MSX. But yes, I, f I fell asleep. <laughs> um, but yes, nobody cared about this game. And then when Metal Gear Solid came out, the total reboot, because remember they had Snake's Revenge, which was fine, I guess. But then when Metal Gear Solid came out, that's when everything changed. But the fact that it got to this point and they were actually able to make Metal Gear Solid was fascinating. But for me, this game in particular, I don't understand the hype behind it. I don't understand why people think this is a good game. I've never understood it. Um, and for that reason, that's why it's number nine on my list. Number eight. Yeah. All right, number eight on my list. This is an iconic Nintendo franchise, or at least Nintendo would tell you 
It's an iconic Nintendo franchise. I think most people never really cared about these uh, th these uh, these these video games, these uh, these characters, ever, really ever. Uh, but it is a franchise that saw, I believe, one game. So I guess it only makes it a single game until they they gained relevance in Super Smash Brothers. And for that, I'm talking about Ice Climber or Ice Climbers, if you will. Um, when I look at this game and I see the gameplay of it, it's incredibly confusing to me. The gameplay of this game is honestly bad. It doesn't handle well. It doesn't play well. Um, when you jump, the jumping on it doesn't feel good. And I understand this came out in like 1986. I understand that. Um, but that doesn't make it, doesn't give it any excuse. I don't under, like, I think this is, if this game was not released by Nintendo, the reality is, is that most people wouldn't care about this game. This would just be a footnote in video game history. Um, Obviously, you climb. That is the idea of this game. You jump, and you move up, and you collect eggplants. For some reason, eggplants were a big player that time, uh, where you would go and you'd collect eggplants, or eggplant wizard on, on uh, Kid Icarus. You know, there's, there's, it's, it's crazy. So, there was a two-player aspect to this, but how many of us really had friends to play video games with at the time? Especially if you had all the games that you could play. Of all the games that you could play two-player simultaneous action on, Contra, right? Let's say you had Contra or Ice Climbers. Who, which one would you pick? Contra, right? Of course you play Contra. Or, I don't know, anything? Anything but Ice Climbers. Anything but Ice Climbers is, 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 is the, is the um, status, is, is what we're going with for this list. I don't know. I just never understood it. I don't understand the appeal to it. I don't think this game really has much appeal at all. Um, outside of these characters being really good in Smash Melee. <laughs> you can play Double Dragon 2. You can do all sorts of stuff. Number seven. Yeah! All right, number seven. I don't know if this one is necessarily rated high, but I do think that people look at this game fondly. And I don't really know why. Uh, this is a... Now, this is a, uh, a James game, an angry video game nerd game. And any game that James has ever reviewed generally has poop colored glasses looked at it. Um, but for some reason, this game has been thought of as an okay game. In fact, IGN put this game in its top 50 NES games. I don't think, and I think that reason alone, like the fact that it was in its top 50 NES games, that this game in particular, I think that reason alone is why I put it on my list, just because that really bothered me. And I don't understand how or why uh, IGN could potentially even think about putting this game on this list. Let's take a look. Really re relevant these days. Made by Sunsoft. Fester's Quest. Now, great tune to start. I'm gonna say this right now. One thing you got in this game was incredible music. Bump, bump, bump. Excellent music from this game. Here's the main problem with this game. As you get it, my, sorry, we're just gonna rock out to this a little bit. Bump, 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 bump. I remember renting this game, by the way, and just listening, uh, you would listen to the title screen, the title music, and just let it go because the music was so good. At least I would, at least. So as you get into the game, you start off with this basic ability. You have a basic shooter. But as you power up your gun, this, this, this is playing with like some stupid mega shooter, turbo NES Max, because this, this doesn't do the game full justice. But as you power up your gun, this gun in particular, look at the wave shots on it. This is a giant critical flaw in this game. And I'll show you why as you go inside. Now this is a stronger version of the gun, but this is also the second level of gun that you get. So it's actually harder to play the game once you get a, a better gun, okay? Once you, and, and what, what they're doing, what the person doing is right now is just farming. That's all they're doing. Cause you gotta farm the game initially to get anything halfway decent. Now look, the, it literally shoots around 
around the bad guys, which is just insane. Absolutely insane. You can see what they're doing is farming. And it's it's just kind of like a puzzle game. You go around and you, you, you pick things up. <clears throat> but at, when you go downstairs, and this, this, this person is probably going to be smart enough to uh, avoid going in the sewers. But when you go in the sewers, you have this, this gun that actually runs directly into the wall. So the only way you can actually hit anybody in, in this game is, is if they are extremely close to you. Specifically going down in there. But the way this person is playing, playing to start, they're literally just farming. Which, who wants to start a game in the first three minutes of the game is just farming crap that you don't know that you need for later on in the game. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. Because, like, the only way you would know to farm, the only way you would know to farm is by playing through the game and knowing that it's just a, a bunch of trash. And here's the next next weapon. You notice it actually kind of stays a little bit in, but anyways. But Fester's Quest, my man, like it looks great from a box art perspective. And you can see as he goes down below, right? It actually looks pretty good. He's actually avoiding hit, getting different items right there <laughs> to avoid getting the gun. It's 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 horrendous. This is such a such a tough game. Such a difficult, ridiculous, stupid game. Um Oh gosh, it's ridiculous. Anyways, so there you go. There's number seven on my list of my top ten overrated NES games. Is this game even rated high? I think it is. I think some people, at least it was with IGN, stupid IGN, stupid, stupid IGN. I'm not just saying this. Look, look, look at number forty-five on their list. Forty-five on their list is Fester's Quest. You see it right there. Yes, this game is rated. That game is rated. Rated too high. Number six. All right, number six on my list. I love a good shoot 'em up. I love a good shoot 'em up. They're the best. They're so much fun to play. Uh, the NES had a bunch of really great shoot 'em ups, like really good shoot 'em ups. When you think of good shoot 'em ups on the NES, you think of like games like Gradius. Gradius was awesome. Uh, Twin B is a fun game. Now, I wouldn't say Twin B is like thought is Twin B in any, uh, uh, you know, but you know what I'm saying. I don't even know. I think Twin B's on the NES, but I think of games that were just really fun to pick up and play, and that's what makes a good shoot 'em up right? Whether it's an overhead or side. This game, to me, I never understood the hype around, even though it's widely considered as an excellent shmup. And, I'm, and I want to be very clear. It is an excellent shmup. It is an outstanding shoot 'em up game, right? This is an outstanding video game. But it's made by the same company that made a better shoot 'em up game. I'm talking about Life Force. Does this look familiar? Yes, it's Gradius. It's the exact same game. The exact same game. Like I said, this is an outstanding video game. It's awesome. It's a great game. But I've already played it. It's called Gradius. So why do I need this? It literally has the exact same setup down here where you go through and you get the options and you shoot the red things and you get you get the get the power-ups and stuff. I know. It has great music. It's wonderful. But Gradius is superior. It's literally the exact same game. And I know that it may piss you off, but I have a better version of this. Exact same game. And this is a good game. I want to, want to, like, I've said that about 14 times. I stand by that. But I don't need to play the same game twice. The box art elevates the hype for it. Absolutely. Number five. When it comes to top tier NES franchises, very few games on the Nintendo Entertainment System saw three games. I can think of Mario. Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3. Off the top of my head, I don't know if any other franchises on the game. Oh, Double Dragon saw three games. But this, may, this is one of the few games that saw three games. Mega Man, obviously. Um, but a very, you, you had to be a powerhouse franchise. Yeah, Ninja Turtles. To get three games. This got three for being the exact same thing 
as it was in one and two. I played through these games when I played through every single NES game when I was streaming a couple years ago. And they're fine, but I don't understand how we got three of these games, especially looking back on it today when this is more or less an iPhone game. Made by the folks at Hi. The Adventures of Lolo, which is more or less just a puzzle game. And I remember being extremely intrigued by this game, extremely intrigued by this game. I saw all sorts of, all sorts of uh, different, uh, I saw all sorts of different uh, player strategy guides and stuff. It was in Tips and Tricks and Nintendo Power. But at the end of the day, all this is, is just a puzzle game. Move this thing here, collect this thing here, get to the exit. And that's all this game is. Nowadays, you can just make a Lolo randomizer. I'm sure you could. But I've never understood the allure of this game. I don't understand how you, how you would want to continue playing this game after you beat it for the first time. Because once you beat it, you know everything you need to know about this game. It goes, it's, it's like the same thing as any sort of beat-em-up in an arcade. Once you beat a beat-em-up, you, beat you beat it. Now the music is cute, it's fun, and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, you've done it. So why do you need to do it again? Well, so you can buy another game, Adventure to Lolo 2, and Adventure to Lolo 3. You notice they did not, I don't believe they made an Adventure to Lolo 4. Did they? Excite Bike is here, and it's ready to take your soul. This is such a one dimensional game, and it's so much better on the Famicom than it is on the NES. I love the idea that you can create courses and tracks. And I actually like playing this game. But the idea of going through, and this it kind of has the same feel. Like once you do the tracks once and you figure out the way you need to be, at the end of the day, really, it comes down to, are you in this lane, this lane, this lane, or this lane, and how fast are you using your stuff? And you can say that about most games. Like this guy's doing wizardry here as we watch them play. And by the way, thanks to Nintendo Complete for this gameplay footage. Um, but for me, oh man, and that sound, the sound of overheating. Oh, listen to that, man. It's such a one dimensional game. You press B to, B to go fast, A to go regular speed. Make sure you don't overheat. The one thing I actually very much liked about this game was getting knocked off your bike. Getting knocked off your bike and having to run do, 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 back to your bike. Now, this guy's not going to do it because this guy's awesome. But once again, this goes back to if this was not a Nintendo Entertainment System game. If Nintendo didn't make this, this would have gone into obscurity forever and ever and ever. Similar to, similar to Ice Climbers. Absolutely similar to Ice Climbers. I don't understand it. And from what I, if I recall, I think the Famicom, maybe I'm wrong on this. I think the Famicom actually had music while you're playing. So it wasn't just like the entire time. Number three. Are you ready to be pissed off? Absolutely you are. I don't know why you would be because this is one of those games that just keeps going and going and going. And when you really think about it, there's not a whole lot to this game either outside of a wonderful theme song and wonderful video game music. Bubble Bobble, made by Taito. Somehow this game has managed to make its way through 35 years of video game history, when at its core, it's a little dinosaur throwing bubbles and destroying robots. Like, it's a point game, and this guy is over here doing all sorts of crazy strats. I don't even know. But you just move on, and you, and you kill all the stuff. What is even happening right here? Oh, we got a million million pickles and cucumbers. Isn't that great? Then you got all, look at he got all the points. But this game for me, I played this growing up at my buddy Kevin Bryan's house. And this is a great game that is just a game to play. Does that make sense? It's a great game that is a game to play. It's a, it's a time kill. It certainly is not an amazing franchise in video games. And you think about Rainbow Island, 
Like, like Bubble Bobble 2. I don't even know how we got there. But it's cute. It's a fun idea. But it's just more or less just an open time kill. And the way you beat the game is you, I think you kill like a giant dinosaur or dolphin or something at the very end. I don't know. For me, I really love, I, I mean, I really love this music. But it's just like a time kill. That's all. That's it. And you get all sorts of little things. And yes, there's strategy to it. But outside of the music, it doesn't keep me going. Although I do kind of want to see what's going to happen when he get all the when he gets all these letters on the side. <laughs> Number two. When you think of classic NES games, this is one of the games that people think of. When you think of hard NES games, this is notorious for that. It's not hard because the game is hard. It's hard because the game is absolute jank. I'm talking about... Ghost and Goblins on your Nintendo Entertainment System. You gotta get the knife, that's the number one rule. But this game moves at a blistering, I don't know, 10 frames a second. You can't control your jump. You get hit once, you're dead. When you, th when you think of like NES hard games, this is it. This is your NES hard game. Absolute stupidity when it comes to this game. I played this and the, it, if you were to look at like a percentage of players who have actually defeated the first level of this game, that I've actually played it. I would say it's definitely less than 1% of the people who have actually played this game and beat the first level. This son of a gun right here, this red devil here, is the dumbest, stupid mid-boss ever. It throws itself at you, knocking off your armor, and making you feel like a dumb dumb just because, just because, just, just be, because, just get, that's a great way to describe it. Just because, just stinking because, and this game is like thought of as like a really fun game on the Nintendo, or at least a game that is, you know, iconic when it comes to Nintendo games. I disagree. I think it's a janky piece of crap. Is it kind of fun to play every once in a while? Sure. Would it be a great versus game for me to play? Absolutely. Would I quit? 100%. But this game is not fun. It's never been fun. Now, Super Ghost and Goblins or Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo is the opposite. It's stupid hard, but I feel like there's some redeeming qualities. Not so much here. Not so much here. Now, we were first introduced to, the, to Arthur here, and that's a nice little redeeming quality. But the idea that you also had to go through this game twice to beat it is dumber than rocks. Number one. What's crazy about this game is that we overrated it. We overrated it, 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 it at Screw Attack. And there were often times we would put games on list just based off its reputation. There were times where we, we provided our stuff, then we're like, how can we not include that? But this game was on Screw Attack's top 10 NES games. And I don't know why. Made by Technos. Many people look at this game extremely fondly. And they say, there's not another game like River City Ransom. And you're right. There's not another game like River City Ransom. And this strictly goes back to my feeble brain not understanding what River City Ransom was about. And I'm way too old to learn it now. But the idea of going through and having action RPG elements in a beat-em-up was something so foreign to me and so silly that I just don't and didn't understand it. Now, is this game, like, and once again, this is strictly personal to me, but I've never liked this game. I never thought it was a good game. 
I think there's some funny like memes from it, like the barf thing and the getting coins from your enemy thing. But for me, River City Ransom doesn't do it for me. It never has done it for me. And I know there's River City Girls now and some people say you should play those games. If I don't like River City Ransom, would I like River City Girls? Dindin says, I bought this game on the Wii Virtual Console because of that list. Sorry. If you do like this game, please head to the comments and tell me all about it right now. I would love to hear your thoughts on why I'm so wrong. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, remember, hit the subscribe button for this channel. And if you want to watch more gaming news and entertainment from my new channel, Craig Talks News, you can find a link to it down here. And of course, watch more videos on the channel. They're somewhere on the screen. Appreciate you guys. See you guys next time.